Hi, and welcome to our next session. Uh, we have Brandon Liu, who is going to talk about Minutely Extracts. Uh, so tools for nimble editing and downloading um, of the edits that go into OpenStreetMap uh, and getting uh, fresh data uh, quickly. Um, and uh, specifically, uh, he's going to talk about uh, OSM Express, which is a new uh, spatially indexed file format. Um, Hello, state of the map. I'm here to talk about Minimally Extracts and tools for nimble editing and downloading. So to put this project in context, I'm going to present a small poll I made um, to ask map makers um, who use OpenStreetMap what scale they usually work on. Um, and about half of mappers work on the scale of a city or less. So that brings us to sort of a fundamental task within um, like using OSM, which is to download a manageable slice of OSM. Uh, because really, OSM is the planner file. It's updated once a week. Um, so inevitably, um, in order to use OSM, you have to go to a download site. Um, here's one um, example that was running for many years um, called Metro Extracts. Um, in this case, it had about two or 300 different cities that were sliced once a week in two different formats. Um, but all of these download sites have some caveats. Uh, specifically, um, they vary in how often they're updated. Um, maybe one that is uh, quite frequent might update once a day. Um, but then there's also um, the issue of if you're interested in one particular, like in one specific area, that might not exist on the download site. That, or you might only be interested in some subset of an area, um, in which case it'd be, uh, it might be a lot of work to just extract the one area you want from that pre-processed data. So I'm going to talk about a brand new web service um, that I've been running called Minutely Extracts. Uh, the URL is here. Uh, it's all public already, uh, protomaps.com slash extracts. And it's a free web service for downloading fresh parts of the OSM database on demand. So here's a quick demo of how this, this interface works. Um, on the main page, there's a sort of interactive map. You can zoom in on one area you're interested in. Let's say I only want the island of Manhattan which is just right here. Um, now, what you might be inclined to do is just draw a bounding box over the entire thing. Um, and it does support this, but really if you do this, uh, it's kind of wasteful because you're bringing in all these nodes um, in ways uh, that are outside Manhattan on the corners here. So it is a bit more efficient just to draw a polygon around only the area we're interested in. Um, and the idea here is that this should be very fast and name it Manhattan, and I can hit create. And uh, it shows you some progress bars, and it's, uh, it should be done very quickly. Now, it does support up to 100 million nodes. So if you imagine uh, grabbing like a, a large slice of the east coast of the US, um, that's about 100 million nodes. Um, it might take uh, like 20 minutes to generate, um, but you can do it all at once. The other nice thing is that if you're, if you're actively editing the map in this area, um, you can download it once, uh, you can make your changes um, in ID or JOSM, and then you can just hit refresh on this existing area. And it will have incorporated all the changes in those minutes that have gone by. And you'll be able to download a fresh file that has all those updates. Uh, so really, this um, is meant to really close the feedback loop between editing and downloading um, so that you're able to take advantage of things you make in OSM immediately. So for some more background on this Minutely Extract service, I launched it last year at State of the Map US in September. And one feature I added last month uh, is OSM metadata. Um, there's now version numbers for all objects, which might make it good enough uh, for, for uploads and editing. Um, and there's also timestamp change that UID username, all the other fields stored in the database um, for everything except for untagged nodes. If you've worked with raw PBFs before, you'd know that. Uh, these untagged nodes um, are the bulk of the storage space. So this is sort of a space-saving optimization. Um, some of the these fields, um, like the username, are not exposed yet on the Minutely Extract site because of, uh, so because of GDPR. Um, I'm working on maybe a system to have a login in terms of use um, in order to make that compliant. 
In order to integrate these PDF files into your workflow, so you can use something like QGIS, which can now open these PDF files directly. Um, it depends on the OSM Goodle driver. Um, but here's an example um, of that Manhattan file opened in QGIS. Um, it's just kind of your standard GIS vector editor. Um, something else that's new um, is a tool I worked on that's called OSM Export Tool Python. It was funded by HOT last year, um, and um, it lets you um, transform a PDF file into a tabular format, such as shapefile or geopackage, or even something like Garmin IMG. Um, and it uses a YAML definition file that maps uh, certain OSM tags to columns. So to compare this Mendeley Extract service to other uh, services, um, such as the OSM API, um, well, Mendeley Extracts can support um, up to 100 million nodes. Um, so if you've ever tried to extract something that large from the OSM API or even overpass, um, you might hit some timeouts. Um, so there is um, sort of uh, a goal of being able to export very large areas from this. Um, and it does support, I think, four people using the extract service at a time. Um, so you might have to wait in line if it gets really popular. Um, in terms of the completeness of the extracts, they are multi-polygon complete, which means that ways are reference complete, um, and any relation that has type multi-polygon is going to be reference complete. Um, but for example, a, like a boundary relation um, is not going to be complete because if you uh, wanted a small area that touches an admin boundary, uh, you could potentially pull in, you know, like a lot more data. Um, so this is sort of um, it works the same way that Osmium does. Um, like another caveat is that areas are not precise um, in Minutely extracts. Um, I'll go more into that in the second part of this talk about why that is. But essentially, um, for any area, uh, the actual things that are returned are going to be some covering or like a small expansion of the area that you give it. So here's the second part of the talk, and that's about the storage backend that powers Minutely extracts. It's a new format called OSM Express. Um, it's totally open source and on GitHub. I'm also working on a documentation page, which you can find here. And there's a talk I made about it for State of the Map US last year. I'm going to give a quick demo in the terminal about how it works. So I have a couple of files here. So this one at the top is an extract of Washington, DC that I downloaded from GeoFabric. So with the expand command, I'm able to convert that to an OSMX file. So that takes, um, for a small size city, this can take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. And what it's doing now is um, it's turning all of the nodes, ways, relations into a disk format and also creating all these indexes. Um, now I can do things like query this database file. It shows me how many of each kind of thing there are, as well as query by node ID. That gives me the location and the tags for that node. I can also create another extract from this database file with the extract command. So in this case, I need to give it an output file name and also a region I'm interested in. So I have a um, GeoJSON of the National Mall in DC that is just a polygon. So I can use OSMX extract DC output.osm.pbf and give it a region, which is a National Mall. So that takes a very short amount of time. Um, and all the Mendeley extract server is doing is calling that command. Finally, so I'm able to apply um, a diff to the database with the update command. So in this case, I have a couple of um, OSC files. I can do an OSMX query, um, and I, it will show me the sequence number. So because it's on 2647, I want to update it to 2648. So I can do something like OSMX update DC with 2648, 2648. And I need to give it a timestamp, which is like 202006. Uh, 17. That's just a number I made up. Um, if you're using this thing for real in production, you, you would get these from the state.txt file. 
Um, and I didn't commit that, but you can see that um, it applied that diff to the database quite quickly. So if you're curious about how the indexing works, um, it's all done by S2 cells. Um, if you see here, um, for a small area like a park in a city, it covers it with a given number of cells. Um, the smallest cell is, is at that cell level 16. Um, if it's a really large area, it will approximate that with um, much larger cells. Um, so this is how um, it's able to do spatial indexing without um, a lot of expensive point and polygon tests. Um, really brief one page overview of uh, other details uh, implemented in C++. It uses a bunch of popular libraries. The entire database is one file. There's no background processes like in Postgres. It's a lot more like SQLite. Uh, you can have one writer and multiple reader processes accessing it at the same, um, at the same time. Um, it's a BSD2 clause license. So if you want to exactly link this into your commercial projects that are not open source, um, that's fine. And uh, for the planet file, converting planet .osm to PDF to planet.osmx takes about seven hours um, and is about a 10x expansion in storage size um, and generally needs somewhere between 16 and 30 gigabytes of RAM. So in addition to adding object metadata, I've also added a more full-featured Python library to be able to access an OSMX database from Python. Um, I'm going to open the browser here and take a look at three example programs using the Python bindings. They're in this Python and then examples directory. For the first program, it's just called readway. It's probably the simplest not it's probably the simplest non-trivial example of a program you could write with the Python bindings. Um, so I'm going to open up the terminal here and I have the dc.osmx I created previously, and I can take a look at this program, which is in the examples directory. Uh, it's very short. Uh, it's very short. It just opens uh, the database here and then runs some queries over it. So for example, how to use that, I would just call Python, Python examples, readway.py, and give it an ID. Oh. Yep, so you can see here um, for this way ID, it has uh, these node locations, um, these tags, uh, it's like the Lincoln Memorial, um, as well as the metadata, and also all the relations that that way belongs to. Uh, so the second uh, more advanced program I'm going to show is called web server. Uh, it's uh, just uh, a web server that returns the GeoJSON for a given OSM object ID. Um, so this is something that uh, you would run as a process. Let's see if I can open this up. So just like before, I'm going to run webserver.py with the OSMX file. That will listen on a certain port. And if I go back to my browser and I go to localhost slash way and then give it the way ID, I can see the GeoJSON there. So I can even take this GeoJSON and visualize it on a site like GeoJSON IO. Um, so that's almost like you could recreate the OpenStreetMap API um, like a on osm.org slash way slash ID. Uh, you could create a, 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 um, a nice UI like that just using this web server. Um, it only uses the Python standard library, um, probably not production ready. Um, they might have some performance or security issues, but it's a good starting point if you wanted to build something more advanced. Finally, the third program uh, is much more complicated. Um, it's called augmented diff. Um, so an augmented diff is um, kind of like an OSC change file, um, but it is reference complete. Um, so if there's ways in the change file, it also includes all the um, node location information. And it also um, shows you if a node location changed, it affects the ways that that node belongs to. Um, so the idea here is that I can implement augmented diffs um, just using an OSC file and as well as that OSMX database. Um, 
The semantics here are slightly different than how overpass works, um, since overpass uses timestamps and not the replication sequence IDs. Um, all that documentation um, is on the OSM wiki on this page. Um, you can also read uh, my issue about it um, in the OSMX uh, GitHub issues tracker. Um, but to give you an idea of how this works, um, I'm going to go back to the terminal. Um, and run this augmented diff program. So you can see I would take in a OSMX database as well as an OSC file. Um, in order to know which sequence number I'm at, I can do an OSMX query on that. So I need to apply uh, sequence 2648. Um, so before I apply the diff, I can run this augmented diff Python program on 2648. And then let's output it to diff.xml. Uh, so now I have a diff.xml uh, that shows me um, all the actions like modify, create, or delete. I can even go into my browser um, and use a Chavi, which visualizes augmented diffs. And then drag and drop my output onto here. And it shows me all of the things that happened in that daily diff. So I can click on away in more detail and see more information like that. I'm going to talk about some of the next steps for both memory extracts and OSM Express. Um, so the library itself um, is fairly feature complete as it is. I want to keep it quite minimal um, and I intend for it to be more of a building block for other programs. Um, so performance and operational simplicity are the overarching goals. Um, some of the things I want to add are support for more languages, especially spatial support to Python that would require bringing in the S2 library. Um, other languages I'm thinking about are especially Go, um, Java, and Rust. Um, the build process can be improved. Um, right now, there is a hard dependency on OpenSSL um, that would need to be patched in S2 upstream. Um, and I do intend to keep the Minutely extracts as a free service offered by ProtoMaps, my new company, um, to improve the mapping experience uh, for both uh, people that are editing the map and map users. Um, I am supporting this uh, through some commercial offerings. You should go to protomaps.com and check those out. Um, and uh, also, if you um, need integration uh, with OSM Express or you want to sponsor features, please contact me at brandon at protomaps.com. Thanks. One. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, there was a lot of information in those 20 minutes there. Um, so we have some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, first question, um, what do you think are the advantages of overpass over OSM Express? And you talked a little bit uh, about the differences between the two, but what are the advantages one over the other? Right. Um, so Overpass is something that I use a lot. Um, it is a much more full featured application. It has sort of like a server process that you run. So like if you wanted to build like a, a pretty simple program that only needs to query it, like you don't want to have to run an entire like set of um, server processes to run Overpass. Um, so my focus was more on building something that is like a, like a really low level building block and is sort of like more maintainable and easier to operationalize. If you're building a production service, um, you might want to just use something that's like very minimal and doesn't have all the nice features of, of Overpass. Um, since with Overpass, you can do a lot of things. You can query by time, you can query by, um, by area, um, but all those great features kind of make, make it like a lot more, um, more unwieldy to operationalize. Um, somebody asked, uh, is there a difference uh, compared to the download function of JOSM? There should be um, there should be some slight differences. So the download function of JOSM will hit the OSM API. So that's like like 
slash 0 0.6 slash API slash map. Um, and that only supports pretty limited numbers of data. Like it'd be, I'd be surprised if you could get more than like a, like a couple hundred megabytes um, from the JAWSM download function. So if you wanted to get a much larger chunk of data, um, you could use minimally extracts or you could use this extract service. But um, in theory, um, the PBF you get should be completely usable as if you were downloading from another download site like Geofabric. Um, there is that small caveat that um, for untagged nodes, I don't store metadata. So if you, um, it's not 100% complete. That's more of a compromise that I made in that design. Um, but for most use cases, um, it should be more than enough. Uh, so there was so there's a several questions that people have asked um, ahead of time and that Brandon has answered um, in the hackpad itself. I'm not going to read them out loud, um, but there is one question here that was apparently answered on Twitter. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it so the audience gets the benefit of that question, uh, which is, uh, can you share the graph simplification tricks? I think that's um, related to something else that I posted on Twitter. Um, oh. <laughs> that's actually not not part of, of um, uh, it's not part of OSM Express, but um, it, like it is related in that if you have access to raw OSM geometries instead of um, a spatial feature in Postgres, you can act on those features as a graph instead of just as uh, line strings. Um, so you can do some clever things related to. Um, things like cartography of road networks um, if you're acting on OSM data itself and not like a um, not like an o not like an OGC simple features like line string um, but that's uh, that, that's like pretty tangential pretty not related to uh, that talk yeah <laughs> um, so I think during the talk you mentioned I think this was from minutely express that there were you could have like four queries going on at once and so there might be a line um how 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 much use are are you seeing is this uh is there something that that's going to that's going to get overloaded not right now um maybe i'm underestimating the amount of people that want to download raw osm data i feel like that's like pretty <laughs> niche um and i'd be surprised uh if if it was like overloaded. But I think in general, like I'd encourage people to use it because um, I do feel like the benefit is that you can take advantage of things you upload immediately to OSM. Because to me, like one of the central issues um, that like is a challenge for OSM is sort of being alienated from the things you're adding to the data set. It's like you can like, there's this value prop of OSM that you can edit the data. Like so anyone can edit the data. But once you 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 like you add it in, and you have to wait like a day before it shows up on some download extract site. That's like kind of dampens the mood. Um, so I'd really encourage people to use it more. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to make it really fast. So if you're just working on some little neighborhood or even like a small size city, it should be done within like a couple of seconds. Well, we'll see how popular this talk ends up. <laughs> um, you may be, you may end up getting uh, more use than you anticipated. Um, cool. So you you suggested. Uh, so somebody asked um, what use cases uh, you thought uh, might benefit from minutely extracts in OSM, um, and you mentioned maybe uh, live updated statistics or vandalism. Um, what I was wondering was, um, can you go into a little more detail about how how someone would uh, how, how what what's the what is the benefit of um, using uh, minutely extracts and OSMX versus I think just getting the um, the minute change sets. So from my understanding, the minute change sets aren't um, used that much for analytics um, or like vandalism detection, that kind of thing. Most applications use augmented diffs. 
And augmented diffs like are kind of an open specification that's published on the wiki. But from my understanding, the only implementation is is inside Overpass. So you still kind of have this like this dependency on probably a public Overpass server if you wanted to build a system. Like you're kind of relying on Overpass um, to to provide the data. Um, so what I'm really trying to do is like try to try trying to like diversify the tooling um, around these change sets. So that if you wanted to build, for example, another chain set analyzer, you could do that in a very self-contained way. And you could even do that in a way that is totally offline. Um, so if you had a server um, that was like off the grid and you, you could only consume chain sets from planet.osm.org, you know, like once a week, you could still operate on um, that OSM data um, and do interesting things um, because you essentially have like a mirror of that data losslessly. Um, so I think in general, it's not as much that I'm adding features to um, these diffs. It's more that I'm providing um, a new and more um, sort of low level building block way of creating them. Um, and then you, I think you, mentioned um, in your last slide uh, your sort of roadmap um, for uh, for the projects um, what uh, what do you think uh, do you think you'll have an update for state of the map us or what what's what's the timeline? Um, in terms of updates, the thing I want to do the most is add support for, for more languages because like, so OSM is like really diverse in terms of the developers working on it. You know, there's like people that use things like .NET or Ruby. Um, and I think one of the most um, impactful things to do yet um, is to support more languages so that even if you're not, you know, like a... Um, like C++ programmer or Python programmer, you can take advantage of using the data format. Um, and that's really going to be driven by the demand of developers. Um, so I invite basically all devs to go onto the GitHub um, and post issues on what you want, um, because I'm hoping this will be like a, like a, like a project that's managed by the community. Um, so I don't have any concrete steps on what I want to accomplish in the next months or the next year, it's more like like if people have a specific problem they're trying to solve or like a language they're using, um, I'd be more interested in helping them do that. So everybody uh, get on GitHub and post your issues. Uh, uh, actually, Brandon, if you could uh, post into the Hackpad, um, the GitHub repo, the link to the GitHub repo, so everyone has the benefit of that. Yep. Uh, Got to reconnect. And it, is all your documentation in the GitHub repo, or do you have a website? Um, there is a documentation website that's more long form. Um, it is at protomaps.com slash docs, D-O-C-S. Um, but there is a link to that in the GitHub. Um, so the link, uh, or, or, sorry, the readme on GitHub has links to most of the other resources. All right, so the GitHub link is now in the Hackpad. Great. So I think anybody who wants to explore further um, is is minutely. I know you talked about a couple of different things. You talked about the index, um, and you talked about uh, minutely express. Is, are those different links, or is that all in one place? They should all be in the same place. Um, right now, I've focused everything like into that one GitHub repo. Um, it's possible that. There might be more in the future, but I'll be using the GitHub README at the central place. Right.
Um, well, I think that that is it for the questions that were not answered uh, ahead of time. Um, so uh, any closing thoughts? I'll address um, one question I saw multiple people have, which is supporting extracts by region. Um, that is something that I'm working on. It's a bit challenging because if any of you have worked with admin boundaries in OSM before, you know they are a nightmare, especially once you get into super relations. Like if you wanted to get the entire United States as one relation that has like tens of thousands of nodes. Um, so that's the main challenge in making that work. Uh, but that is something that I want to support on the site, which is being able to extract, for example, just your city or even just your neighborhood, as long as there is an OSM relation for that place. Um, so that, uh, yeah, that is one feature that I am actively working on. All right, great. Thank you, Brandon. Everyone go check yeah, out the tools. You.